when I was your age, what you do didn't exist. How do you explain what you do or what you're known for when talking to an old person like me? Well, that's a lovely question. So if I'm talking to an old person, I'll of course say that I have been using Minecraft, that is a game, uh, which people think is like a way of distraction for students. But then again, I have been using that for the past six years to make education you know, better for students and making the classrooms more engaging, you know, wherein we have game-based learning with visuals that have been you know, added in the, like, in the classroom environment because students learn better when it comes to games, especially when we see things, le we learn better rather than just text-based learning. So I have designed the same lessons that we study in the book into a game. Students can explore the environment, they learn the lesson, and then even the assessments are performed in the Minecraft game itself where teachers are giving questions in the game and we're answering them wherein we are not having a pressure of you know, getting marks but you're actually excited to see the game, you're getting the questions and you're answering them. So again, with the visuals, you remember the concept and you answer it. Similarly, I've also you know, been teaching teachers about how they can use Minecraft and to date I've been training about 15,000 plus teachers and students on how Minecraft could be used and along with other ICT tools as well like you know app smashing Minecraft with Adobe with Canva and many more and besides that I have also made different worlds on sustainable development goals to name a few one of them has been on SDG 4 quality education so that focuses uh, on the importance of equity education and the quality of education over the quantity of education so we might be listening to various talks of people talking about SDGs, but when we actually see what we need, we'll understand what we have to do. So when you see what we, you know, the results of using SDGs by working on them, that makes people inspired to work on the SDGs and go together as a team. I apologize, as an old man, what's SDGs? What, what's that Sustainable acronym Sustainable Development Goals. Say that once more, sorry. Sustainable Development Goals by the UN, so they have to be achieved by 2030. So, you know, people are working towards, you know, clean water and management on life on land, life underwater, and, you know, to attain peace, no poverty, quality education, sustainable cities. So all aspects that we have to be, you know, improved so that people can have a better life to lead in the future. So how on earth did you get to this point? What's your trajectory? Now, many people I interview so, well, you've done this now for 30 years. How, what was the process? How, how did this come about for you? Well, um, it all started when I was back in grade four and I just knew how to play Minecraft as a gamer, you know, survival gamer, you know, moving around the world and exploring everything, breaking and mining. But when I came to grade five, all of a sudden I realized that students found it quite boring reading lessons through the book as it was mere text. And then again, there was no exciting thing that was there as part of the lessons. And then one day there was a workshop that was held at my school to teach teachers about how Minecraft could be used. And that is the day when I connected the dots that yes, Minecraft, if they can be taught to teachers, then teachers could use it as a tool in the classroom for engagement. So in grade six, I made my first lesson called the Egyptian civilization in history. And I asked my teacher that instead of the notes that you give us, I know they're very helpful. But then as an addition to that, to make the lesson more engaging for students and to make them ask you questions, to become more inquisitive, to have the classrooms more lively. I hope you use this. So she used that in the classroom and I got the result instantly. Students more engaged, asking questions because it is a game Second of all, it is Minecraft. I mean, who does not love to play Minecraft? So that gave me the, you know, the push that I needed to keep on continuing on creating more and more lessons. And as I was talking about the SDG goals, uh, there was a top, you know, there were different competitions that came on, came on coming up that I saw like, you know, had inclusion of SDGs to focus on SDGs. So I researched about them and I came to know that these have to be achieved by 2030, wherein people are, you know, focusing on a single goal and making sure that they are researching measures to eradicate that problem. So for instance, SDG 1, no poverty. That means we have to make sure we are, you know, applying certain measures that leads to no poverty in the future. Everybody has access to equal rights and living a good life ahead. So I decided to convert that SDG into a Minecraft world that showcases 
uh, the you know problems of that uh, goal and how the goal can be achieved by eradicating those problems. So here and people are seeing the problem, not just hearing it. So when you're seeing it, you understand it better, along with proposed solutions that people can adapt, adopt in their own life, as well as try and you know be able to tell others that how you can do it as well. So that's again a chain reaction of ripples that can be sent ahead. Mm -hmm. So explain to me as a non-gamer, how does utilizing Minecraft actually lead to a realization of a sustainable development goal in real life? I don't mean within a game or helping people visualize it. How does it actually translate to a reduction in poverty, let, let's say, for example? Of course. So if I'm talking to a non-gamer, I'll of course explain what Minecraft is versus like a blog-based world wherein you can build anything out of your imagination, place, mind blocks, and add whatever you want to add. It's basically, you just have to sit, open your laptop, and start creating whatever you want. So there are no restrictions here. So if it comes to no poverty as a goal, and if I'm talking about you know people just realizing that, that how you know no poverty is actually a problem. So if I'm just talking to you, let's say, yeah, but no poverty, people are at the streets, most of the population lives on the poverty line. But then again, if you are seeing that, like, you know, we have non-play characters in Minecraft, they basically act as a mode of telling us things, such as if you click on that NPC, non-play character, and gives out some dialogues. So we can, you know, we've added certain people who are displaying the problems, as in, like, normally people talking, similarly people living under poverty line, added in an immersive environment inside Minecraft, sharing their problems. So basically weaving a story inside of gaming world, people viewing them and they're realizing. And it's just not viewing that, you can also visualize in your own brain. When you're seeing something, you're able to realize that what exactly the problem is. By listening to it, it may you know go here and there, but when we can see it, we'll realize the problem's potential. And then again, you start focusing upon what could be done to solve the problems and then the world gives the solutions to you as well that yeah to eradicate this problem here's the solution you can look at it and then keep on sharing to people and then again minecraft worlds also include challenges that can be solved inside the world itself such as you know scavenger hunts to uh, get the puzzles and pieces of you know what has to be uh, you know reached to the end so people are getting the puzzle in the end it has every solution that you need to solve the problem of poverty. Then again, the gaming experience is there along with the learning experience. So you are understanding the problem, the solution, and again, enjoying at the same time as well. So it's not a serious thing, but yeah, seriously understanding through a game. It sounds a lot like gamifying empathy. Exactly. I, I don't like the question, what do you want to be when you grow up? I didn't like it as a kid and I don't like the idea of asking people that. However, if I were to have asked you in grade three, let's say, before you became this big name in Minecraft, what would you have said that you wanted to do with your life? I had always wanted to be an artist and also an astronaut. So I remember having discussions with my mother that how, like, I have to choose one. So I remember her telling me that you can be an astronaut and when you have a free time in the you know spaceship you can do drawing and make paintings as well. So you'll be the artist astronaut. So you know the person who is drawing in the airship and exploring the entire universe. So that was my first like you know aim because I had read this book called Exploring the Space. I, th I think that's what it's called. It was my first book I read back in grade two. So it just you know I'd always had the feeling you know, I even used, like, that's the first time I even realized what AI is because my mother created something for me that included my face, but, uh, you know, in a space suit. So, yeah, like, and also a book that has, like, my face in a space suit that says, like, all about uh, astronauts. So, yeah, that was my first ambition. But now, if I would say, it's, of course, you know, moving forward with gamification and education. And my purpose uh, is to, you know, go ahead and explore about how sustainability and AI could be brought into gaming. And also, I have been working on my startup that's called Curry Catalyst, quality over quantity. So curriculum, catalyst, I mean, increasing the reaction of making classrooms more engaging. And it has two aspects to it. I talked about that in my session as well. It focuses to needs of teachers and students, but, you know, functional. So for students, it is a platform to look forward for profile development, to the you know samples for LORs, for essays, as well as uh, summer internships 
and so on. If the teacher side what is the main side of the app, we would focus upon giving out skill-based lesson plans. So herein it includes various skills such as um, you know social emotional learning, game-based learning, challenge-based learning, research-based, and many more. And those would be added to the you know the template that they'll be submitting to us. And of course, many of them will be added already that they can look at for various grades on various subjects and topics that they can download as well as upload on our website and app that our team will you know, include certain activities that can make their you know, classroom enriching. So not just game-based learning, different aspects added. So if teachers don't want to use games, they can use other aspects by doing hands-on activities, experiential learning, STEM activities, or you know, going to the playground. So of course, they can trust us and our team, where we'll be adding skills that are more required rather than just learning and getting marks in the exam, because today's generation has to be about skills. We're talking about you know, or, you know, learning more skills that can be applied in our life. We ask our teachers that, what are we going to do with this subject that you're teaching to us? So if she'll know that, and that we can help them with, then of course the classrooms will be the best place for students. Many of the most successful people in the world credit one or a very small number of individuals to their success. So, for example, someone fueling them giving them inspiration, helping them along their journey. But you also have people who feel failed by certain people on their educational journey, so they succeed in spite of them. What about you? Who, if anybody, fueled or failed your journey so far? I would say my journey has been fueled a lot till date, and that has been done by a lot of individuals who have been the pillars of my life. The first one would be my mom, because she has always told me to never give up to keep on continuing and if you have setbacks, come back stronger. My father who's always told me to innovate because even if you have created the smallest of thing, keep on innovating, making it better and then moving ahead in life. My grandparents have told me you know, immense number of stories from which I have lessons to learn and apply in my own life. My principal of my school, Ms. Vinda Gogia, my school, Satpal Mittal. So they have been the bedrock of my aspirations. So, you know, having an environment that has been positive, very fulfilling, and, you know, giving me a push forward has been amazing. But I would say myself as well. Because if I'm not there for myself, I'm not motivating myself, having the best of the aura environment around you won't help. You have to have that inspiration and that, you know, the power of doing something from yourself. So, yeah, these have fueled my journey till date. Amazing. So because you're in a position of influence you might have younger people coming to you saying namya how do i do what you do or how can i do something like what you do but as i said at the beginning i'll say that question again but as 10 years ago this career path didn't exist if you've got people children coming to you age 9 10 years old saying how do i do what you do how can you advise them when the opportunities that they might end up having access to when they're 16, when they're 20, when they're 40, don't yet exist? How do you advise them? Well, I would say that it's important that they follow their passion because it's like, you know, people just have that thing that we must do what the other person is doing. And that again, won't lead you anywhere in life because you have to do what you love to do and it always comes from within. So you should keep on continuing and most importantly is to be receptive to change. Learn from your elders because they have the experience, you know, and you, of course you can learn from them and apply that to your life. And then again, you may have the skill sets, but they are the ones who are there to inspire you to learn from and then improve your life and improve whatever you're making ahead. So following your passion and again, it soon becomes your profession in the future. And most importantly, make sure that you're it's learning, sharing, and going together as a community. Fantastic. So last question. You're 16 now, right? 17 now. 17 now. Sorry. Yes. You're 17 now. If you were to bump into 10-year-old Namya, 6-year-old Namya, who wanted to be an artist or an astronaut, what do you think they would make of your success so far or what you've been able to achieve? Well, you mean like what would I say to her, right? Oh, what would they think? Oh, um, what would what she would, think about yeah, me? What would, what would six-year-old, ten-year-old Namia think? Of, listen, we're, we're at the biggest educational trade show in the world. Well, and you're a keynote speaker. Yeah. So, like, if I just meet her here right now, I'll just tell her that you have a long path to go to. Just don't give up. 
and most importantly is that you should always stay connected to your roots because that's where you come from you should like you know keep your head high but make sure that you're always there at the ground be humble because like if you have a tree in front of you will always take the you know fruit that's low towards the ground and not towards the you know sky because that's the most humble and down to earth person so keep on continuing do not give up and most importantly is to be humble be kind and never stop thank you so much this was great <laughs>